Hi, this is Sajan Bhartia and welcome to TFR. And today we have with us once again, Johan Bjartland, CEO of Betacom. Johan, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me back, Sapnil. I appreciate it. Last year, we talked a lot about the adoption of 5G private wireless networks. Uh, the adoption continues to grow. A lot of reports keep coming out that the market will continue to grow. But I want to hear from you. Uh, what do you see? Where are we heading? What future holds for private wireless networks in 2023? We see a lot of traction right now in uh, different industries. Uh, we're focusing very specifically on logistics, uh, manufacturing, and also on uh, on uh, transportation airports and so forth. Uh, we feel that uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for the U.S. to uh, bring back manufacturing here. And to do that, uh, we need a lot more robotics, automation, and so forth. And in order to do that, then we need robust wireless networks. And that's where private wireless comes into play, where mobility plays into it, uh, security, cybersecurity, uh, and also latency. So that's where 4G and 5G networks come into play, and we see growth in those areas driven by those industries. And since you're talking manufacturing, and if I'm not wrong, the chips and science sector, that also wants to bring a lot of manufacturing back here. So do you see these kind of, you know, a lot of kind of initiatives from the government will also help? If you go to that for the for ge geopolitical reasons, right, with uh, China, Russia, but then specifically China uh, looking more and more threatening to Taiwan. We have uh, more than 90% of our chipset manufacturing right now is in, uh, uh, is in Taiwan. So obviously uh, that's a geopolitical concern for the government and, and for us in the U.S. So uh, they have a lot of incentive programs for, uh, the, for uh, companies to bring back chipset manufacturing to the U.S. to be less focus on Taiwan. So Taiwan is still going to continue to be a great partner, of course, but there's probably going to be a higher proportion of chipset over time uh, being created here, manufactured here in the U.S. on shores, dri driving basically the manufacturing industry that we talked about before. As we are looking at bringing a lot of manufacturing, you know, stateside, do you think the infrastructure, especially when we talk about IT infrastructure and people may not realize it, but the fact is that network is like the highways of the modern economy. Without networking, nothing will work. So is the infrastructure ready or you think that we still need a lot of work to do to get that infrastructure in place? So when we do bring all these industries here, uh, we don't have to do any struggle or roadblocks. What I think is missing, if you think about where we put these manufacturing uh, facilities, right? It's usually a little bit outside of the big cities and sometimes really far outside of the big cities, which means that connectivity is an issue. So Sometimes we need to bring fiber there. Uh, we don't have fiber and so forth, right? Uh, but what's pretty much always missing is a secure wireless networks. Uh, usually the carriers, the big MNOs, they're building more for the urban, suburban spaces, right? Where there's high density uh, and they're not really covering these places very well. Um, so what we see, what we see is uh, there's a really big need to for, for more infrastructure in these manufacturing facilities, which are always placed pretty much outside of big cities where coverage is not great for, for a lot of different reasons. So there's definitely more money that needs to be invested in infrastructure on the IT side as well. Can you talk a bit about you know how uh, you know private wireless networks, and of, of course, uh, you and I talked about earlier, when, I think two or three years ago, when the government released some spectrum to further enable 5G adoption also. It's not as expensive to, to deploy these private networks. Uh, so talk a bit about, you know, how these developments will also help those industries. And, and then we'll also talk about 5G versus 4G, but later on. But let's talk about, you know, the technologies that are there. 4G and 5G, uh, we deploy these technologies actually more or less like you deploy a Wi-Fi network, which means that we're deploying it behind our customers' firewalls, which means that their data never leaves their own firewalls, right? It always stays within their network, and they quite like that. Um, and then if you compare Wi-Fi compared to uh, uh, 4G and 5G, um, we, 4G and 5G you have much better mobility, right? The, the network is really built for mobility uh, and also around security. There's, there's just a lot more um, cybersecurity uh, hardening opportunities when you're using a 4G and a 5G network on the edge in particular, where Wi-Fi is not really built for that. So we're, what we're finding is that a lot of the applications, a lot of these business critical applications for manufacturing and for, for logistics, Wi-Fi is just not robust enough. Wi-Fi will always be around, but it's going to be around more as a 
mass adoption technology. But for these business critical applications, that's really where we find ourselves uh, deploying 4G and 5G private wireless networks. When do you see that you know 5G network will kind of surpass you know 4G? Uh, how far are in that journey? Right now, 4G is the biggest technology for sure. Uh, it's it's a big ecosystem, right? So you need the networks, you need the radios, but you need the devices, and then you need the apps. So it's it's a pretty it's a big ecosystem that needs to come come together here. And uh, we're starting to see more devices in 5G this year, of course, than last year. So as devices become more and more readily available, we're going to see 5G overtaking 4G deployments. But it, we're still a couple of years out before we really see that. So we, we, we think this year, as well as next year, at least, we're going to have more 4G networks being deployed than 5G networks. In this space, earlier you were talking about, uh, of course, the adoption of these technology will be across industries. But there are certain industries that you are uh, focused on. Uh, talk a bit about, you know, some of these industries. Uh, let's look at both ways. How private five G or private uh, wireless networks will kind of enable these industries, like teleportation. You talk about manufacturing, and on the other way, how the the growth of these industries will also help the adoption of private networks. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a virtuous cycle, right? Uh, where COVID put a lot of pressure on, on our global supply chain. Uh, there was a lot of capital. Uh, and, and we all realized how, how, how fragile our global supply chain is. Then, of course, we have, gov- we have uh, geopolitical uh, issues, you know, Russia, Ukraine, uh, potentially with China and, and so forth as well, right? So all of this is really driving a more focus uh, on, on domestic manufacturing. Uh, and of course, we need more logistics in order for that to happen as well, right? To shorten the supply chain, to be less dependent on, um, you know, on manufacturing and so forth that we built for decades and decades and decades in China and other places. Um, and in order for that really to work, uh, we, need, we need private wireless. So even though we might go into recession, maybe it will be mild and so forth. These are, these are huge initiatives that will continue to be funded and driven. And back to your earlier point, uh, the government is very much aligned with that and is also pumping money into that type of spending as well for industries to make those choices. So um, I, I, think, I think we're in a really good spot. I'm not going to say that it's recession proof. But uh, but it's as close to that as you can possibly come, I think, because the, there's such a big need for it. What I want to ask you, just let pick manufacturing and transportation. What will be the impact of private networks on these industries where, you know, there are a lot of things that they want, but I mean, not that they want, but it will enable you, uh, enable them to do a lot of things like on the manufacturing, you know, on the floors, you know, in fact, they use a lot of IoT devices, you know, a lot of things are there. So I just want to understand how private network will kind of further enable these uh, industries to, to, you know, grow rapidly within the states. It will make it go faster and it will also make, it will also be able to offset um, the the fact that we have worked for decades and decades and decades on offshoring these type of industries, which means that there's there's just not a lot of skill sets out there, right? Because that kind of skill sets, they haven't been the jobs here in the US so far, right? So we need to build a lot of automation into these industries in order for the, for, for the, the industries to really work, to be able to take pick up the capacity that we have spent decades and decades on outsourcing. Um, and and that's really how you know private wireless and automation really comes into play. So specifically manufacturing, for example, if you think about an assembly line and you think about um, you think about uh, uh, how often that needs to be reconfigured, which is which is really quite frequent. Right now, uh, they have cat five tables into every or cat five cables into every single one of those manufacturing stations. So which may, makes it quite hard to reconfigure both both physically and also logically. But if we have a private wireless network there instead, you can actually reconfigure uh, these these workstations and these assembly lines very quickly. So that's just one uh, use case that that is quite practical that we see uh, that the manufacturing industry is, is is using right now. Can you give some examples of uh, transportation industry also, if possible? Yeah. So on the transportation industry, so if you think about uh, airports, for example, 
Um, you, you have business critical applications, for example, luggage scanning. And when you need luggage scanning the most is, of course, at the peak hours of the airports, right? That's when you have the most capacity, the most volume. If you're using Wi-Fi in your, in your scanners, uh, because you're, you're, you're scanning uh, the bags uh, down as it comes off the, the, the conveyor belt underneath the gates and to get uploaded onto the, the airplane, um, then, then the Wi-Fi capacity is, of course, a much lower because we have all the other passengers and so forth. They're logging on with their laptops, with their smartphones, et cetera, using Wi-Fi, right? So, so then this, this scanning, the luggage scanning scanners don't work very well, very well. But if you have a dedicated private wireless network, it doesn't really matter how many passengers you have going through, how much of the spectrum they're using, because we're using different spectrum than, than Wi-Fi. And therefore, you will have a much more consistent service with, with, uh, with uh, predictable demand and predictable supply as well. Let's talk about the innovations, developments that are happening within the 5G ecosystem. And also, if you can quickly also talk about the role of Betacom in this uh, sector. 5G is a standard, of course, a 3GBP standard. And what we're waiting for right now is release 16, which is sort of the next version of the standards, right? So our partners, Qualcomm, um, Airspan and so forth, they're working very closely now with the new standard, right? So we get all these new features, which will come with much better latency and, and more robustness in general, I would say. So we're working closely with, with our partners. We're testing out different devices. We're different, testing out different applications with the latest software and hardware from, from our partners to make sure that it actually works end-to-end -end as well. Because we also, need, we also need the standard is one thing, but when you, once you start building according to the standard, there's so many ways to interpret things. So you also need interoperability testing between you know, different devices, between different network nodes and so forth. So that's kind of where we come in, right? We're making sure that it all works end to end. Johan, thank you so much for joining me today. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. I would love that too. Thank you so much, Subnil. Very nice to be here. Very good to see you again.